Hey guys, so today we're tide pooling at Sunset Cliffs and we found a bunch of cool things. I found a giant sea hare as well as a bunch of new nudibranchs. It's so much fun. Let's see who we can find today. It's a beautiful morning here at the beach and the low tide is at negative 1.1. It's super slippery, so for your safety and the safety of all the tide pool creatures, look carefully and walk slowly. A great tip is three points of contact for balance. This will give you the best chance of not slipping. One of the first creatures we encountered this morning was a large southern kelp crab. It was a cool sighting to see since we haven't seen one this large before. However, our main goal was to spot nudibranchs, specifically chromodorids. But seeing this kelp crab's mandibles up close was still quite impressive. Another super cool encounter were these California two-spot octopus. We saw maybe four to five of them, and most of them were chilling in super shallow rock pools during the low tide. This one had a little crustacean of some sort crawling about its head. We also got to see the octopus change its colors using specialized cells called chromatophores, which expand and contract to reveal different pigments, allowing camouflage and communication. Finally, after a lot of careful searching, we found our first nudibranch, a spotted dorid. Next, we saw a few McDonald's dorids. This species wasn't described until 2017, as it was previously confused with a similar-looking Lamacia cockerelli. Then there were these wiggly little marine flatworms that we couldn't identify, but they could be Enchiridium punctatum. nudibranch we saw was the California Chromodorid by a brittle star. This nudibranch was a goal species to see today and I was so incredibly excited to witness these two species interact briefly. Brittle stars are echinoderms and they use their flexible arms to crawl around the sea floor. They depend on tube feet, which are sensory tentacles. They don't have any form of suction. As their name implies, brittle stars are extremely fragile, but if one of their arms break off, they actually have the ability to grow it back. We then found the yellow gilled sea goddess. Its scientific name literally means twin in Latin. That's because this nudibranch very closely resembles the white spotted sea goddess. The only difference is the color of their gills. This nudibranch has numerous small white dots scattered on top of the mantle and between its tubercles. The rhinophores are orangey yellow in color with approximately nine lamellae on the club. Oh, there's a tiny little shrimp catching a ride on the yellow gilled sea goddess. And right next to it, we saw the San Diego Dorid. How neat that it's named after such a beautiful place. Dialula is a highly variable species. The number of spots can vary from 4 to 40, and the color of the spots can be faint or quite dark, even black in some nudibranchs. Porter's Chromodorid is a stunning nudibranch. It's rare to see them up north past Monterey, so I'm grateful that I get to see these nudies here in San Diego. Out of all the nudibranchs we found, I'd have to say that the California Chromodorid was my absolute favorite. This nudibranch is found along the California coast from Monterey Bay through Baja, California. The species became regionally extinct in the northern part of its range, disappearing completely from California by 1984. However, it reappeared beginning in 2003 and is now found in a few isolated places in California. McFarland's Chromodorid was another gull species sighting. Look how vibrant it is. 
and our last Nunebrink for the day was this small hunchback Taurus. Can you see it? There's a tiny little yellow umbrella slug right here. See? It's right over here. Chilling right on top of this rock and red algae. It should be fine though, because they can handle low tide, but I'm going to put it under the water so I can get a better look. You got to be gentle since these shells are pretty fragile and there are some cracks on the edge of them. There, now we can get a better look. And let him do his thing. This was also the first time that I've ever found these little guys, so it was super cool to see in person. This little slug was super interesting to watch wander about, and its two little eye spots made it quite cute to look at, and it had these little rhinophores that resembled sheep ears. Just when I was finishing up observing this little yellow umbrella slug, another California chromador popped up in the same pool. So I figured I'd show it off again, since they're one of the coolest nudies that we found today, and one of our goal species out of the three chromadors. Over here we have this large shallow rock pool, and guess what it's filled with? Green bubble snails. Everywhere. There's maybe like 50 bubble snails in this pool, you just have to look really close since they're so camouflaged. These small snails burrow themselves with sand to ensure that predators can't see them as they blend into their environment. They're slightly green and brown, which perfectly matches the sand and algae that they live in. These snails were also pretty goofy looking with their big googly eyes compared to every other animal that we saw today. We caught one rolling over from the tide coming in as the current blew them over. But it's fine, these animals are built for the dynamic intertidal environment. Then I also spotted some egg coils in the same pool, most likely from the bubble snails. It must be breeding season since the sea hares and bubble snails are all having little eggs. Bubble snails have an external shell that nudibranchs lack as adults. They carry their delicate shells on their backs, often concealed under wing-like peripodial lobes which are extensions of the snail's muscular foot. These snails need to protect themselves from predators with camouflage or by staying safely buried during the day. They are known as head shield slugs. Their plow-like noggins allow them to bury into the sand while diverting those pesky grains away from the most sensitive places. Over here we have one, two, three, and four California sea hares chilling in this pool. And all this little orange substance you see in the bottom of the pool, that's their poo. Here, let's get a closer look.
And then the egg mass is right over here. We'll zoom in and get a closer look in a second. Egg masses. found a tiny little sea hare. It's like a baby, I think. Yeah, Here, that's let me stick my camera in the water so you can see it. There you go. Look at that baby little sea hare. And then it's right next to this giant abalone that's moving super fast. Many abalone species have experienced the alley effect, which is a biological phenomenon which can be described as a decrease in fitness caused by a decrease in population size. This decrease in population size reduces the reproduction and survival of individuals. In the case of the green abalone, this effect is likely due to the increase of distance between males and females as the population density decreases, leading to reproductive failure. Sea hares, on the other hand, are sexually hermaphroditic, allowing them to mate with any individual they come across. This is especially beneficial in intertidal environments where mates are hard to come across. As we were walking away, we found this one strand of California sea hare. But it should be fine as the tides were coming in and it was about to take us out.